Today's video is made possible by A-Data. Their XPG line of SSDs brings ultra-fast performance in both 2.5 inch and M-SATA form factors to perfectly suit your upgrade needs. For more info, check out the link below. What's going on, YouTubers? Welcome back to Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Elric, your host, today with my co-host, Nick from ASUS. And today we're gonna to be looking at some brand new 4K technology that these guys are bringing to the table. This is pretty interesting stuff, and I'm gonna hand the microphone over to Nick where he's gonna tell you all the new details about this new awesome 4K technology. Let's rumble. So, all right, Nick, so why don't we start off with talking about a little bit of the technology that's behind this 4K monitor? Because I understand there's just a lot of interesting things that have gone into this build, correct? Yeah, so one of the, I mean, the, the biggest thing right away is gonna be the resolution, right? So on 4K resolution, you're gonna get 3840 by 2160 on this monitor. Um, that's really gonna give you a lot more real estate. So some of the key applications that people are gonna be using this with, of course, besides gaming, um, is gonna be photography and video editing. So finally, those people that have their DSLR cameras, high resolution pictures that they're taking them, they can finally um, edit them, take a look at them at a much higher much higher uh, resolution on their monitor at native um, at native resolution. And with a screen this big, you'll have plenty of real estate to like spread your stuff all over the place. So people are doing a lot of editing and stuff will not only have, you know, a giant monitor, they'll actually be able to play stuff around the screen to have multi windows open at one time with that type of resolution, correct? Exactly. 4K is technically four times the amount of 1080p pixels. So if you're going to load up a 1080p video on this monitor, you're only taking up one fourth of the, of the space of the monitor. So that leaves you a lot of room, whether you're watching videos or want to have multiple web pages up or multiple browser windows, um, you have a lot of real estate to work with. Yeah. Now, also, some of the other technologies that are behind this, I understand that like this monitor is kind of like split in half. There's actually like two screens inside of one that actually creates the 4K. Can we talk a little bit about the panel and about what actually goes into that? Sure. So, um, essentially, the con the controllers that uh, the controller that powers the panel um, is o is only going to be able to do about 1920 by 2160 at 60 hertz. So, to get around this limitation and be able to offer people 4K gaming at 60 hertz or just 4K experience at 60 hertz in general. Um, we basically have two controllers inside that do 1920 by 2160 and then we combine them back up into a single image. So they merge to create that technology so that correct. you can maintain that 60 hertz, correct? Correct. And that's, usually, and that's done actually on the driver side. So on the Intel side, um, you go in and set up collage mode. On the AMD Ifinity side, you set up the Ifinity display, a 2 by one And then on the NVIDIA side, NVIDIA is actually just going to recognize the monitor and automatically tile those two yeah. displays back together. A lot of people right now understand, but the technology is very, very new and a lot of the drivers from all these companies are taking a while to kind of catch up. So at this point right now, some of the dryers are very kind of immature, but they're working on the technology to get it going, correct? All the major things are working. You might have some little bugs here and there um, that are all being worked on by the GPU manufacturers. And then we'll also have some firmware update available for the monitor soon um, as Visa standardization gets set for one for Visa 1.3, right which on. is basically going to give all the GPU drivers or GPU manufacturers a way to uh, recognize 4K monitors natively without having to maybe hard code specifically for one model. Now, I understand that the panels that are used in this are actually their Sharp panels. And actually, Sharp sells this monitor for actually, what, close to $4,500. Is that correct? Yeah, for a little bit more. More and so in the professional space, Asus, we co-developed this with Sharp, and we're selling it in the consumer space for about $3,500 MSRP right now. So think about that. If you're out looking for this monitor, know that the same technology that goes into the Sharp monitor that costs $1,000 more is being brought down to a lower level to you folks at $3,500 which may seem a little bit pricey, but this technology is so new, it's cutting edge. And anytime anything's cutting edge, it's always pricey. I'm sure as these things go on, we'll probably see these things down in the thousand dollar range, what, probably year, year and a half? Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be too long. And um, I think a couple other things that we can mention about the monitor in general, one of the big differences is that people that go out and buy monitors, they're really used to saying, hey, what type of panel is it? Is it TN panel or is it an IPS panel? Um, this is going to be a big change. So this is neither a TN or an IPS panel. This is actually- New technology altogether. This is what's called IGZO and stands for Indium Gallium Zinc Oxide. Hey, you go, what? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you so say that, Nick? The you basics, go? all you need to know basically is that using this new process, um, you can create smaller transistors and dense pack pack more pixels into a dense area. So this is what allows so many pixels, over 8 million pixels to fit in one panel. Now, one thing I have to definitely say to the audience, I don't know if any of you guys out there have monitors or big TVs. One of the biggest things that I noticed about them is they get hotter than hell. There's no heat rating off this, Nick. 
So how are you working that? Because I'm not feeling any heat come this, off this monitor at all. It's actually almost cold this is actually, to the yeah, touch. This is a really, this, so this is going to be the thinnest 4K monitors. There are other monitors out there, um, more so in the professional space, that would cost thousands and thousands more. No. Um, but this is going to be the thinnest one and the most affordable one. And like you said, heat-wise, it's only going to have about an 87-watt uh, TDP when it's operating. Yeah, I mean, because I can feel it. It feels lower than my body, so that's pretty good. On my other monitor in my yeah. room, I have a Dell monitor, and when I touch that thing, it's a 30-inch, it's hot. I mean, it can almost burn your hands. This having no heat at all is great. I mean, if you, you're stuck inside of your room and you're working, you don't have a lot of air circulation, a hot monitor increases the temperature in your room. So this won't do that at all because it's actually running cooler than your body temperature. And I know that we're kind of offset in an angle right now with the camera, too. So viewing angle-wise, it's going to be very similar to IP as well. So IPS panels usually come in at around like 178 degree viewing angles. Um, this one will come in at 176. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here totally at an angle and I can pretty much clearly see everything on the monitor and I'm sitting at a very odd angle. Many of the yeah. monitors that I have, even around the house, if you get to an angle like this, the screen kind of looks kind of blurry. And you get a lot of color shift maybe. And, I'm yeah. seeing no color yeah. shift. I'm seeing complete even color across the monitor and even screen. But then again, you know, for $3,500, you're gonna expect the yes. best, right? You, you, want a, you want a quality display. So some, some of the other features, um, ports wise, it's gonna have a display port. It's gonna have two HDMIs and it's gonna have a little USB port on the side, which is essentially only intended for firmware updates. What about Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt does not have a Thunderbolt port now. Okay, and I understand that you guys will have different models. This particular model doesn't have like the normal splendid technology that some of your other stuff does. Will you guys actually have another model coming out that will have all that as well? It's kind of geared towards the gaming more? We will have other models available. Um, they are gonna be based on different technologies and they will likely have more ASUS type features. Since this was co-developed with Sharp, this is kind of, a di bit different uh, as far as OSD menus um, if you're used to ASUS monitors in the past. Uh, we've used many of them around here, as yeah. you well know. Um, I want to talk about something. Like I've been looking at this like the whole time, and I'm really noticing that I don't really see any type of flicker at all. And I know you said this is only 60 hertz, but mm -hmm. looking at this monitor, I've been staring at it for a while. I don't even feel any really eye fatigue to strain to look at it at all. I mean, is that normal because you know usually people are like saying the 120 hertz monitors where my eyes don't strain but i'm looking at this and it i see no blurriness no refresh at all i mean i suppose when the camera guys are recording we might see some of that in there but i'm seeing none of that through my human eyes yeah i mean i've had i've had a really good experience with the panel um one of the one of the quirks um, is that so if you're not in sst mode so maybe this is a good time that we go over display port so display port has two different modes. Uh, one that you can go through the cable with SST, um, which stands for single stream transport. And then it also has an MST mode, which stands for multi-stream transport. So some of those that may be familiar with daisy, uh, with daisy chaining display port, the MST is what allows uh, display port to be daisy chained to send multiple signals through one cable. So you could have multiple monitors up through so a single connection in theory. With, with display port, but essentially what we've used and we talked about the dual controllers in the monitor is that we're using MST mode to send two signals over one DisplayPort cable to the two controllers in the monitor. So if you're not enabling MST mode on the monitor and you're, you're using 4K, you're going to be at around 30 hertz uh, refresh rate. Okay. But once you enable the MST mode and you power the two separate panels, you can up each of those panels to 60 hertz and then join them. Right, so it combines, the two, it combines the two of them together to create an overall signal for the whole panel, yep. correct? And that's okay. how you're gonna get 60 hertz at 4K for the meantime, until more powerful controllers come out maybe a year from now or a bit more, yeah. And I mean, I'm sure as, as, as technology you know, grows, they'll be coming up with more stuff as it always as is. As always. So the technology's always growing. Well, hey everybody, thanks a lot for watching. This is pretty much just the introductory video. We're just gonna show you some of the technology behind this new 4K monitor. We've got plenty of stuff coming up. We're going to show you some gaming and some other stuff, so stay tuned for Tech of Tomorrow.